Amphibians are broadly classified into five different categories known as frogs, toads, Sicilians, salamanders, and newts. They are cold blooded animals which live under moist atmospheric condition and venture out to forage after dusk. In southern India, we only have the first three of the categories, of which I will be presenting here a few from the first two, namely frogs and the toads. The moment we say frogs and toads, a doubt immediately arises. What makes them different? We have more frog species here than the toads. The common amphibian we come across everywhere, irrespective of the environment, is the toad. They are generally rough looking, short limbed, warty, and dry looking, unlike the frogs. Frogs are rather long snouted, smooth skinned, slimy, long limbed, and capable of long jumps. All these come under the order Anura, in which toads fall under the family Buphonidae. Frogs on the other hand, comprise of several families under which many species are classified. Some frogs that live on trees or vegetation are called tree frogs, which forms a family called Racophoridae. Terrestrial frogs are subjected to several divisions depending on their characteristics and domain where they live. Amphibians are generally indicators of a healthy environment. Any fluctuations in their population or absence indicate serious problems in the environment. Land conversions to form tea estates and other cultivational activities spell disaster to many of the sensitive populations of certain species of frogs. When it comes to cultivation, use of pesticides and other chemicals comes to the sea. This is the most catastrophic consequence for the amphibian population due to their extreme sensitivity to chemicals. It is sad to say that as we try to modernize ourselves, we are thoughtlessly trying to alter the pristine nature without even considering the living beings that coexist with us. Now, let us start first with a common toad, Tetraphrinus melanostrictus, earlier known as Bufo melanostrictus. Best known black spotted toad or black spined toad is the most common amphibian found around us. Let it be garden roadside, groves, cultivation or any other environment, you can name they are there. Their shack in controlling insect pests may be unknown to us, but they certainly give their share of support for a balanced living condition around us. How do you differentiate them in the first glance? Look at their rough skin. This characterizes the common toad. These hard spotted projections are called warts. Have a look at the face. The spotted and the rigid skin make it appear heavily armored. Those eyes are bulbous and large. Behind the eye lies the ear, which is a sensitive circular diaphragm smaller than the diameter of the eye through which they hear. Just above it lies its secret weapon known as the parotoid gland. 
This gland contains poison known as bufotoxin which acts as a deterrent from predators. This is what happens to a rat snake which tries to catch hold of the toad which releases the toxin and deters it from eating the toad. The mucus with a paratoidal alkaline concoction creates a distasty meal and makes the snake flee from the scene. The toad later recoups and becomes normal. Black spotted toads are highly vociferous during the rainy season which happens to be their breeding season. Their long drawn call is periodically produced to attract its mate. Many at times, competition for the females results in several males trying to mate with the pair, which is already in amplexus. Now coming to frogs, we will start with the fungoid frog, Hydrophylax malabaricus, which are one of the commonest ground dwellers. Their distribution is confined to peninsular India from Maharashtra to Kerala. In certain parts of these peninsular Indian states, they are very common and can be often seen around human habitation. These frogs are the most beautiful among the members of the family Ranidae with a moderate size. Charles McKen, an Indian born British naturalist, who named this frog initially, gave it the name fungoid frog due to its coloration resembling that of a wood attacking fungi. Later, he himself experienced that they are capable of emitting a powerful fungoid odor which can be felt in a closed space. The first thing we can notice on this frog is its orangish red color of the back with the black speckles. Sides are almost black or blackish brown with irregular white spots in a row. The marbled black legs are strong and are capable of powerful leaps. Another prominent thing we can notice is the large sized circular ear diaphragm also known as tympanum, just behind the eye. In certain parts of Malabar, during the rains, they have been seen taking shelter inside thatched huts where they live side by side with human beings. Just before dark, they move out for their insect hunt. Fungoid frogs, though considered to be of least concern status by the IUCN, the vanishing habitat and the urbanization are taking a heavy toll on their population. The rainy season energizes many of the tree frogs from the family Racophoridae. The Malabar gliding frog is no exception. They appear from nowhere to start their breeding rituals. This western guard endemic Trachophorus malabaricus is a large green tree frog with white and black fine speckles as you see here all over the dorsum. It is unmistakable at the first glance due to their stature, size and color, especially the red webbings of the fore and the hind legs. The webbings on the limbs are large and act like individual parachutes once they are airborne. The air caught under these webbings act as a cushion to considerably reduce the free fall and increase the distance they cover while making an arboreal leap. They can easily leap distances as long as 9 to 10 meters from heights to reach the nearest landing location down below. The direction of glide is controlled by adjusting the body and the positions of their limbs like a rudder to reach the required destination. 
These colorful frogs are common denizens of the evergreen forest and are often seen in the most coffee estates and home gardens adjoining forest areas. While climbing trees, they spread their hind legs with the toes stretched, exposing the red membrane, literally making an ungainly walk. They often fall prey to birds of prey and arboreal snakes. Look at this entanglement of a bronze-bagged tree snake and a well-matured gliding frog. This was a scene from the Arlam Wildlife Sanctuary. Since the prey here was too large for the tiny mouth snake, the struggle went on for some time before they detached themselves and had to leave the scene unharmed. This deadly embrace was funny to watch as you could see the head of the frog stuffed inside the snake and the frog holding the snake's neck as though in a deadlock. They make foam nests in ponds and wells where many can be seen in action. Their vocalization of tucks and clips are a major component of the rainy nights and intensity and bigger calls increase as they locate females nearby. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe.